Hi everyone, welcome back. This week in level F, we're going to be going over lessons 81 through 84. You'll need worksheets 68 and 69, the fraction chart with the pieces, the supplemental fraction pieces that are found on the second page in the appendix, so page two of the appendix at the back of your lesson book, the math card games book, and the fraction card deck. In lesson 81, we're going to be learning the term simplified fraction. We'll review equivalent fractions and we'll learn to skip count with simple fractions. The warm up is to fill in the multiplication chart, which is on worksheet 68. Your child could complete that today or work on it over the next few lessons. It will not be needed until lesson 85. This may be one of those warm ups that you want to leave to the end of the lesson, since it doesn't really have anything to do with the lesson, and just dive in. To this lesson. The first activity asks for your child to find all the fractions that equal one half. Any straight edge will work. The book suggests using what the one piece from the fraction chart for convenience. It's there already. At the end of the paragraph above the charts, it says the fraction with the lowest numbers is called the simplified fraction. At this point, I would ask which fraction of the ones listed which is a half, two fourths, three sixths, four eighths, and five tenths, which one has the lowest numbers? So obviously the lowest numbers there are one and two. So one half is the simplified fraction. Let's take a look at what the skip counting with fractions looks like. Okay, so for example, the very first exercise that we're doing with skip counting is with the fourths. So I would have my child say one fourth, one half, because two fourths is one half. So one fourth, one half, three fourths, one. That's what skip counting looks like with the fractions. Let's look at the fifths. So we have one fifth, sorry, one fifth, two fifths, three fifths, four fifths, five fifths. Notice that all the fifths are already simplified. Okay, now we could do the sixths. We have one sixth, one third, one half, two thirds, five sixths, and one. So this can be a little tricky. It's not going to go as fast as what I just said. Your child will actually have to think it's kind of like doing a little bit of gymnastics in your brain to think, okay, two sixths is one third. So here I'll say one third, then three sixths is one half, but it's really good exercise to get through all of that. The other thing um, that we're going to work on is building fraction stairs. This is another way to look at the skip counting patterns. So here's how I would build the fraction stairs for thirds, for example. There's one third, here's two thirds, and one. One third, two thirds, and one. I can also represent this with the fraction cards one third, two thirds, one. Let's do it again with fourths. We'll start with one fourth, then two fourths is equal to a half, and then three fourths, and finally one. So when it's laid out like this, we can do the skip counting very easily. One fourth, one half, three fourths, one. We can also represent that with the cards. So we have one fourth, one half, three fourths, and one. So there's two things I want you to notice about these activities. One, the cards, the fraction card deck, those cards that you pull out for this lesson will also be used in the next lesson. So you might wanna just rubber band those so that you don't have to go sifting through the deck again. Um, and then the second, point is that this is where you're going to need the appendix page two. So go ahead and pull that out of the book, cut it up into puzzle pieces because there's not enough actual fraction pieces from the fraction chart to build fraction stairs, for example, the fifths. 
Okay, so you'll need those extra ones from appendix two. So then just work your way through the remaining fractions and ask the in conclusion questions. After that, you can play concentrating on one, which is game F3 in the math card games book. And there's also a blog about it on the Right Start Math website. So I'll leave a link in the descriptions for that game. In lesson 82, we will practice finding equivalent fractions. To warm up for this lesson, have your child use the fraction chart and the card deck to skip count through the given fractions that are in the lesson book. Next, you'll play a game with the cards from the last lesson. Have your child spread out those cards face up and then pick up the cards in skip counting order. That was a little warm up for your child playing the next game, which is called Series Solitaire, which is game F16. It does have a blog about it on the Right Start Math website, so I will leave a link. And if there's time to play, you could also play the game F17, which is called Follow the Series. Then you can ask your in-conclusion questions and finish off the lesson. For lesson 83, we will be reviewing, adding, and subtracting simple fractions. The warm-ups are on worksheet 69, and they review the skip counting that we've been doing for the last couple of lessons. With the fraction chart available to your child, ask the questions under adding and subtracting. Next, you will play the game one half, which is F8 in the Math Card Games book, and there is a blog about that as well. So I will leave that in the description. This game is in preparation for the worksheet that your child will be doing today. Notice that your child will only complete half of the worksheet because we're gonna save it for the next lesson. Ask the in-conclusion questions and then you're done. In lesson 84, we will practice adding and subtracting fractions. The warm-up for this lesson is to complete the multiplication table on worksheet 68. If your child has already finished it, that's fine. Just go ahead and move on to the next activity. And that activity is to have your child build the fraction chart with the pieces and line it up side by side with the whole fraction chart so that you have two complete fraction charts side by side. Your child is going to be referring to these two fraction charts while answering the questions from the lesson book that you ask. Next, you can play the game one or two, which is F18, before having your child do the worksheet. You'll find a blog about this game on the Right Start Math website. Then have your child do the second half of worksheet 69 and then ask the in-conclusion questions. That's all for this week and we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.